Hello Guru Nation, welcome back to the Clinical Trials Guru. So I'm at a Viva Summit uh, with Dr. Jeff Kingsley. Uh, good, he's also from researchers driving in a car. <laughs> Riding in cars with researchers. Riding in cars with researchers, <laughs> got that totally wrong. From, no, totally okay. from IAC Health, yep. right? Uh, you just gave a very interesting, or I guess you led a discussion on fair market value mm -hmm. versus pay, pay for performance yeah. for sites. Mm -hmm. You're very passionate about this idea. I am. I think it's great. Um, how close are we to this? Not. Not close, and why not? Well, because everyone's afraid of the, regula the regulatory bodies. So there are rules that exist in, in U.S. law around how you can pay healthcare providers, and they, they have unintended consequences. They were put there to protect patients. They were put there fundamentally, an easy way of thinking about it is you can't overpay. The reason being, if a hospital were to overpay a physician, they can buy the physician's ethics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the fair market value rules were really put there to say you can only be paid fair market value, therefore the physician always retains autonomy to treat a patient as they see fit. That was the intent. The unintended consequences is where you have all of these other situations where you should be able to pay people for differences in their capabilities, their output, how, how incredible their quality is, and yet paying them gets held down by these FMV rules. Right, and this was, at least when I got started, uh, we were able to negotiate a little more freely. Now they've been using the Sunshine Act, mm -hmm. I think ever since 08, or whenever it went into effect. Um, as their first line of defense when it comes to negotiating sure. budgets, right? So what can the sites do? We need, first of all, if we get all the sites out there to just negotiate, right? right? Just start with that, we, we could make a lot of progress. Yeah. If we raise the bar on the FMV. Yeah. Because what you're saying and what I didn't know until I came to the conference today was fair market value from a research perspective is not derived from Medicare or insurance reimbursement. Correct. Right? So if everyone negotiates higher mm -hmm. FMVs, the bar gets lifted. Absolutely right? true, absolutely true. Now what's gonna be easier or, or quicker, that happening or industry switching to uh, pay for performance? So I want both. I want both for a very fundamental reason. Right now, as, as we discussed, our current budgets, we are only paid for giving data to the sponsors. We're not paid for the quality of the data. We're not paid for how timely mm -hmm. we provided the data. We're not paid for the other things we should be paid for. For that reason, I want two things to happen. One, everyone needs to know their costs, and they really do need to increase what they're negotiating on their budgets. And so to your point of, would we want everyone to immediately begin to negotiate their budgets better? Absolutely. Of course. And if you do so, FMV goes up and everybody wins. But two, I still want us pushing for a pay for performance model so that I'm not just paid to give data to the sponsor. If I'm providing high quality data, I should be paid for that. I should be paid more because it's high quality data. Mm -hmm. if, I'm pay if I'm incredibly timely and I can get your trial open in less than 30 days, if, I, if my query resolution is under 24 hours on average, consistently under 24 hours for query resolution, I should get extra something for that. And in today's model, we don't. We don't. Now, we're going to do a origin story with you on the podcast. We'll, we'll schedule one later. Can you give everyone out there the Cliff Notes version of who you are, how you got started? Uh, if there is a Cliff Notes, Cliff Notes version? version? Yeah. Jeff Kingsley, I'm a family physician by training. I fell in love with research. I gave up my practice over 13 years ago. I started heavily in research in infectious disease, and today we've diversified away from that. We still do infectious disease, but today we have 15 offices in six cities in two states. And we have coming up on about 200 concurrent research trials in well over 30 medical specialties. Phase 1B through 4, inpatient, outpatient, medical device, biotech, pharmaceutical. And what's the end goal for you? Is it after, after switching to uh, uh, pay for performance, what's the end goal? Well, that's part of the end goal. Mm -hmm. what, what fires me up is revolutionizing research and changing lives. That's our passionate cause. Revolutionizing research and changing lives. So I talked to my team about doing research is glorious. Doing research is a wonderful career. It doesn't light my fire. 
Doing research is great. What gets me excited is revolutionizing how research happens. Mm -hmm. Making the process of research better. Innovating faster. That's what gets exciting. So that's the end goal for me, is changing how this happens. Very good. Can't wait to do the podcast and get more uh, content from you. But in the meantime, where can people go find you? I know you're on LinkedIn, you're on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And what's the YouTube channel again? Um, off the top of my head, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't tell Writing you. with researchers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Writing. you. Riding in cars with researchers. I'm, yeah. I'm putting more I would stuff have messed on, it up again. Yes, but you could find us through riding in cars with researchers. Very good idea. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank and you. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.